will come to the course uh, advanced reaction engineering. So, in this course we already have discussed about the basics uh, non ideal flow in the pulse uh, experiments or the pulse treasure test that already have discussed. So, for the residence time distribution or residence time distribution functions uh, when we conduct uh, any reactions or experiment in any reactor. So, then uh, how the reactants behaves inside of the reactors means whether they are residing the same or spending the same time or not uh, during uh, flow or reactions inside of the reactors that basically we are discussing. So, in our previous class pulse uh, we already have discussed that that if we want to measure the uh, residence time distribution function that is we can express in terms of E capital E T. Okay, so, this is the residence time distribution function that way you can express. So, this E t or residence time distribution functions we can measure either pulse experiments, pulse treasure test or step treasure experiments or stre uh, step treasure test or we can conduct. So, either way we can conduct. So, pulse treasure experiment that we already have discussed. So, today we will discuss about step treasure experiments that we will discuss and then cumulative distribution function that is called AFT and mean residence time functions or residence time function that is expressed in terms of Tm that we will discuss and other moment that is variance so that we will discuss that is expressed in terms of sigma. So, these are the things we will discuss for today. So, in the uh, steep treasure experiments pulse x pulse input of the treasure that we have uh, discussed. And now, uh, based on that, uh, with respect to the time, so once treasure has been or treasure is input in the injection lines or feed lines, so then uh, at different times, so we can measure the concentration of the treasures. Okay, so these are the concentrations uh, from the experiment pulse experiment or pulse input experiment we can get, and from that CT curves or C curves or E curves that we can get. So, now if we want to uh, conduct the step treasure experiments then output concentrations of the vessels or the reactors. So, that we can so here the injection should be in there is uh, continuous treasure input would be there in the feed line. Okay. So, and from here continuously we will get out the concentration or the com uh, component C out means that is the treasure whatever that is uh, in here that we are getting from here. So, that will means uh, find out or will measure. So, the input concentrations uh, uh, we can express in terms of uh, convolution integrals that is expressed in terms of this the, the output concentrations we can write this and 0 to t times. So, we are going to measure if we know the inlet concentrations or input treasure input uh, the particular concentrations of the treasure that we are uh, infusing here in the feed line. And if we know E t prime that is the residence time distribution function. So, then we can measure the concentrations output concentration from the vessels. Okay. So, if the input or inlet concentrations uh, if let us say for a pulse experiments uh, if it is perfect. Uh, input is there, it takes a very fraction of seconds. So, then uh, it would be the perfect pulse in say injections. So, then so direct uh, means sometimes if it is ideal reactor is there. So, then direct delta functions we can use or imperfect if it is pulse injections that also uh, we can use or uh, for that uh, some other function is there. So, that is ED function. So, that we can uh, gates. Okay, so, now here uh, let us say RTD functions uh, are uh, means this RTD function or ET function that is for pulse input and cumulative distribution functions that is expressed for step input. So, I said uh, there is the pulse input or pulse uh, means treasures uh, we can inject or we can conduct the treasure test by pulse input and number 2 is the step input step input of treasure. So, by both the way we can conduct in pulse inputs. So, just one sort of injection should be there and for that the residence time distributions E t we can get and for the step inputs. So, we will get F t that is cumulative distribution functions that we can get. So, okay. so how they are related or for the step inputs. So, injections is there. 
So, here is the concentrations uh, we can express C T 0 uh, C 0 T that is concentration initial concentration when T less than 0 then concentration 0 then there was no injections. So, in the case of the trace tracer experiment. So, once T greater than equals to 0 then continuously a particular concentration of the tracer that we are infusing here. Okay. So, this is the tracer concentration initial concentrations. So, that is not for one time. So, continuously with the feed line feed has a particular volumetric flow rates V naught. So, here the tracer concentration that also would be a particular volumetric flow rates that may be very small fraction volumetric flow rates that we have to infuse here and continuously that would go inside of the reactors and will take out from the means for the detections means uh, whether it is coming or not. So, here is uh, the step injections and step response step injections and step response. So, first step is the step injections and second step is the step response. So, here we are conducting step tracer experiment. So, in the step tracer experiment, so initially if we go less than 0, so that I said, so tracer concentration is 0. So, if T greater than equals to 0 means after this, this is the time. So, greater than equals to 0 the tracer input suddenly jumps and at this particular concentrations. So, we injecting the tracers and throughout the reactor so that would be there. So, that is the maximum concentration so that is there. So, that is the step injections. So, that is we are going to means here and so once the tracers uh, spend some times inside of the reactor that would come out from the reactors and from here we can get tracers. Okay. So, at different times, so time and tracer concentrations C output or tracer concentration that we can get. So, once these tables we have, so we can uh, this is called response curve. So, means C versus T if we plot, so then the response would be like this. Initially it was 0 and after certain period of times it is the concentrations remain constant. Okay. So, this is the uh, step injections, this is the step response figures or how does it look like for the step tracer experiments that we discussed. So, now with the experiment, so we know the concentrations and times for the tracer experiment or uh, tracer test. So, this is the inlet concentration that is the constant. So, these equations means we can write this way. So, this is the concentration out if this part is constant means initial concentration of the tracer that we injected in the feed line that is the constant therefore, C 0 we can take out from the integrations outside. So, we can write this equation convolution integrals this way. Okay. So, here if we divide uh, C out with respect to the C 0, so then so we can get this uh, C out by C naught step that is the ratio of the concentration output concentration to the initially injected concentration. So, then right hand side it get this. So, this is equals to F t, this is cumulative distribution functions for step tracer experiments. Okay. So, then F t we can express this, F t how to find out. So, if you know different tracer concentration outlet concentrations and if we divide that with respect to the initial concentration then that would be the cumulative distribution function or F t. Okay. So, how they are related F t and E t. So, F t and E t is related like this E t equals to D F t by D t. Okay. So, we can write this way or this way either this way. So, E t and F t how they are related. Okay. E t equals to D F t by D t. Okay. If we know F t then we can find out D t. If we know it F t E t then we can find out D t by differentiating D F t by D t. So, E t we can get. Okay. So, this is the from the experimental observations of the results for the step tracer experiments. So, I said uh, this is the times and step output concentrations we can get from the experiment and then FT how to find out at particular times. So, at this particular times this would be FT, this particular times FT would be this, this particular times FT would be this. So, FT curves also we can get or FT curves we can develop easily if you know. Uh, this component and this component, so we can plot this. So, then this type of curves, curves we can get. Okay. So, before that, so we can say the C curves that is step that is the output concentrations and this is the mean times or here you can plot T versus output concentrations for the step experiment C step and C out both are the same. So, that is the concentration indicating 
uh, the concentration of the treasure that is coming out from the effluent streams or the fluids. Okay. So, it would be like this. Okay. So, and it reached to the maximum, maximum is the C0, the C0 is the maximum concentration or up to this. So, initially it was low and then th this is the old fluids and this is the new fluid. So, this way output readings we can get okay, for that uh, means tracer experiments. Okay. So, this is the step uh, tracer experiment. So, means once FT curves, how does it look like? FT curves is this, if we plot T against FT, so then FT we can get and mean times. Next is the mean times or mean residence time distribution that is expressed in terms of T bar. Okay. So, T bar is the mean times means that re uh, reactant molecules or the treasure that is being spent inside of the reactors. So, means some fluids or elements or treasure components spent let us say a reactors within that period of times a these molecules will travel from here to here then it leaves. So, within this reactors when it is enters let us say it takes 60 minutes. So, maximum times it can take that is the 60 minutes for one molecule like that uh, why the mean time is coming. So, mean time means few molecules take 60 minutes, few molecules take 59 minutes, few molecules take 50 minutes. So, then average or means since once the treasures or any reactant molecules feeding inside of the reactor due to the non ideal nature of the reactors it may take uh, longer times or shorter times. So, therefore, uh, we have to take average time. So, that is the mean time. So, mean times how we can find out uh, from the experimentally or experimentally we have this value only time and concentrations that uh, table is there. So, with that we can find out the mean times. So, mean times we can expect 0 to uh, C max uh, T D C step by 0 to C max D C step. So, we can this is equals to C max. So, we can write this. So, 1 by C max 0 to C max T D C step. So, T means we can write this way these equations we can use to find out step mean time for this particular experiment uh, once we conduct the uh, step treasure experiments. Okay. So, in this step, step treasure experiment or study, so there is some advantage some disadvantages are there. So, in the treasure experiments why we should do that. So, the here positive steps is usually easier to carry out experimentally than pulse test okay. and total amount of the teaser in the fit over the period of the test does not have to be known as it does in the pulse test. Pulse test whenever we conduct any pulse test pulse and step in this particular pulse experiments. So, here is the initial means how much quantity of treasures that we should know, but in case of step input. So, that is not required means for the throughout the experiment same quantity of treasures that would be infused in the fit line. Okay. So, that is the advantage in case of the treasure experiments and drawbacks in this particular step experiment is that difficult to maintain constant treasure concentration. So, so here we are injecting the treasure here. So, in that step experiment continuously let us say 0 0.1 milliliter per minute. So, that way treasures we have to feed. Uh, therefore, it is difficult to maintain the a constant treasure concentration in the feed and a large amount of the treasure is required for this test. So, treasure amount means if we conduct 60 minutes for that experiment to complete. So, then uh, large volumes of the treasures we have to inject there. But in case of the pulse, small amount of the treasure is sufficient, but here large quantity of treasure is required. Okay. So, this is the basic difference. So, therefore, most of the cases in treasure experiment people prefer to conduct the pulse test. Okay. So, this is the basic difference advantage disadvantage and sometimes this treasure is also expensive. So, once the materials is expensive to conduct experiment, so always one should prefer to follow the pulse test or small amount of the, that particular material is required to conduct the experiments that is very common. So, okay, so or it is preferable. So, now the characteristics of the ET that is the exit edge distributions for that 
particular uh, experiment. So, suppose uh, we know E t, then we can move to the F t. So, E t suppose uh, a fraction of the materials that is leaving, suppose if we are conducting the treasure test for 60 minutes. Okay. So, just we have started infusion of the treasure by pulse experiments and then the treasure will come out from the reactor. So, that it may take as let us say 60 minutes. So, total duration or time span is 60 minutes 0 to 60 minutes. So, within that let us say uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So, within that how much quantity of the treasure that being left from the uh, reactor. So, that easily we can find out. So, how means uh, or 0 to 15 minutes how much quantity of the treasure been leaving from the reactor that we can find out means 0 to 60 that we can find out 0 to infinite times. So, but in any times, so any fraction of materials we can find out. So, here 0 to let us say any time t equals to let us say 15 minutes. So, uh, we can find out if we know the E t and then so we can put it here integrating this. So, the fraction of the implement that has been spent in the reactor for the less than t times. So, less than t times means less than 15 minutes. So, uh, the amount of the fraction materials leaving from the reactor that we can find out and that is equals to F t. So, t to infinite means here this is let us say t 0 to t and t to infinite. Okay. So, this is infinite. So, rest of the things t to infinite means uh, within that fraction of materials is leaving and t to infinite rest of the materials or treasure component that would leave uh, that we can write or you can express this 1 minus F t okay, that already you have uh, studied. So, just to means revised it or this is the step injections inputs and response that already have discussed. Okay. So, this is the F t curves how does it look like. Okay. So, now mean residence time distribution functions or uh, T m uh, for any reactors whether it is CSTR plug flow reactors or a ideals or non ideal reactor. So, in that case uh, how to find out. So, the space time tau we can write or we can find out by volume by volumetric if we know for any reactors that we can find out, but mean residence times we can express this way or this way you can find out. So, T m equals to 0 to infinite T e t d t. So, from the experiments we can get C and T. Okay. So, this is the experimental results we can at different times different concentration of the treasure we can find out once we know T and C means uh, at different time the constant effluent concentration of the treasure that we know. So, from there we can find out E t at different time and then so once we know the E t then T into E t we have to multiply T and E t if we multiply then we will get T E t. So, then these are the value if we put here and if we integrate total value. So, then the mean times we can find out. So, okay. so or space times you can write this way for ideal systems. Okay. So, now second component is the variance uh, that is expressed in terms of the sigma that is also required. So, sigma square that is expressed in terms of 0 to infinite t minus t m square e t uh, d t. So, we have to find out t minus t m square in we have to multiply it with e t and then so what are the value would come means experimentally what we are doing this we are doing these are the experimental uh, results at the beginnings we are getting so, after that we are getting E t. So, then we are uh, once we know E t and T e t. So, from here T m so we can find out once we know T m. So, then T minus T m so we can find out okay. T is there T m is there the difference we know then T minus T m square we can find out then T minus T m square into E t we can find out. So, this value we can find out this way though. So, one table we have to make uh, for that experiment once we do the pulse or step input or experiments. So, if you want to know the variance, so then so this way this tables one by one individual points you have to find out and so once we know then so we can integrate we can do the integrations then sigma square that is the variance we can find out. So, it is called the second moment is the variance or square of the standard deviation sigma is the standard deviation. So, it actually indicates the magnitude of this moment it is actually indicate the spread of the distributions 
means spread of the distributions of what that is the stressors or the molecules or the reactants that is when it is being injected or passing through the reactor. So, it should be like this, it should be 0. Okay. So, it has some value, but it should be 0. So, but uh, next is the third moment or skewness. Okay. So, that is expressed in terms of SQ, SQ that is the lack of symmetry or asymmetry of the distribution. So, this is the distribution that is uh, if you uh, draw a vertical line. So, from here to here and here to there uh, equally it is distributed. So, if the systems which work properly the distribution should be uh, means materials or molecules distribution should be equal spreadings. But when uh, sometimes the reactors means this is for ideal reactor let us say. So, in most of the cases we are talking about non ideals or real reactors in re real reactor it would behave different from that ideal reactor. Therefore, the this is the spread means long tail formation is there or here is the long tail then it is coming like this. So, here is you can see the difference in between so 1 and 2 and 3. Okay. So, 3 curve, uh, curve or figure 3 is perfect as compared to the figure 1 and figure 2. So, then spreadness is there. So, this is not symmetric distribution, this is the symmetry distributions, this is asymmetry distributions. So, this indicates the reactor is non ideal reactor, this is non ideal symmetry distributions one kind of reflect it is close to perfect or ideals. Okay. Now, uh, the variance uh, I said how to find out. So, variance this way or these equations we can use to find out the variations. So, or T m how to find out so that we have discussed. So, this way also this equation either these equations you can use or these equations you can use both the same. So, here mainly we have to use T T m T value, T m value and E t value these are the components if you know for a particular experiments then variance uh, we can find out. Okay. So, now uh, we will go for means uh, mean times and the standard deviations how to find out from the E curves residence time distribution functions means E t is the residence time distribution functions that is coming from time and concentration C curves uh, then we can uh, C curves, then we are getting E curves. Okay. So, after that we can find out T m and sigma squares. Okay. So, that part is okay. So, now sometimes uh, we use for the treasure test uh, or compare sometimes a reactor to other reactor, sometimes in a single reactor or same reactor, sometimes we increase or decrease the volumetric flow rate of the feed. So, then uh, may, maybe the uh, responses would come different. So, for the same reactors uh, if you want to compare then so we need to do the normalizations of the RTD functions. So, E t we usually express in terms of residence time distributions functions. So, here uh, instead of t we can write t by tau that is theta, theta that is also dimensionless parameter t is the time, time units and tau is are also time. So, this is theta is the dimensionless parameters theta that is the time theta time. So, here is residence time distribution functions instead of E t we can write E theta. Okay. So, E theta equals to tau into E t. So, E theta how to find out or how to calculate so or how to measure E theta if we know uh, tau and if we know E t then we can do multiplication then so we can get E theta. Okay. So, now E theta we know. So, here suppose we have a CH state reactors. So, E theta usually expressed in terms of 1 by tau e to the power minus T by tau E theta equals to uh, if the reactor is not ideal. So, since usually uh, plug flow reactor or batch reactor that we consider as a ideal reactor. So, if it is uh, follow the ideal means ideally means there is no dead volume bypassing things in there inside of the reactor. So, if CSTA reactors uh, perfectly mixed CSTA reactors, so E t usually expressed in terms of 1 by tau e to the power minus t by tau. Uh, how that is coming? So, that we will discuss later means detailed derivation. So, E t equals to this for a CSTA reactor, how that is coming? So, that we will discuss. So, here is dimensionless parameters. So, that we discussed here 
So, E theta equals to T minus a T into E T. So, here if we substitute this E T here, so then we can get E theta equals to E to the power minus theta. Okay. So, E theta easily you can find out. Okay. So, if we know T C T E T T uh, tau uh, T m tau these are the components we can find out. So, then E theta easily we can find out. So, E theta equals to this and theta equals to theta also we have to find out theta equals to T by tau. Okay. So, T is given tau we have find out. So, T by tau or theta will come. Okay. So, once theta is coming. So, E theta using these equations. So, E theta at different times we can find out. Okay. So, by that way we can find out uh, the nature of that uh, E curves in the dimensionless forms. Okay. So, why it is important C? So, here suppose we have a uh, reactor, here it has a particular volumetric flow rate speed is entering. So, here stressor is input here C in C out we can get it here from there C curves or E curves we can get. So, if V 1 is the volumetric flow rate we have taken for a particular systems uh, reactor. So, then the nature of the curve should be this E curve should be like this. So, if volumetric flow rate instead of V 1 if we change it into V 2 that may be higher or lower than V 1. So, then the nature would be like this when volumetric flow rate is this. So, E curves for the same reactor, but when volumetric flow rate we are changing. So, the nature would be different. So, if we normalize the things means instead of E t, if we express in terms of or represent in terms of E theta. So, then for any volumetric flow rates. So, V 1, V 2, whatever V 3, any volumetric flow rate uh, for the same reactors if we change if you want to conduct the test. So, then same curves would give since here time is normalized. So, therefore, it would give this. So, here 0 to infinite e theta d theta that would be 1. Okay. So, thank you. So, today is up to this. So, means uh, what we have studied so far. So, today we have studied step treasure test or step treasure experiment. So, how to find out various uh, parameters that is uh, mean time, okay. how to means uh, get the F t or cumulative distribution functions F t curve F t and how to uh, get the F t curves mean time space time and uh, that is the standard deviation sigma square how to calculate uh, or standard deviations. So, how we can find out experimentally then uh, we have uh, done the normalizations of the RKD functions okay, e theta that we have discussed. Okay, so, today is up to this. Okay, so, next day we will discuss something else.